In metaphysics, the term non-physical is assigned to various things, including the laws of logic. Using the laws of logic, we can do a lot of things. In fact, perhaps reality itself requires the laws of logic to be reality. These things are fundamental principles of how things work. They are embedded in the fabric of reality itself, perhaps. But what does it mean for them to not be physical? Of course, like all things, non-physical is just a label. A label that we use because maybe we've just run out of labels. We've run out of words to describe things. These things aren't physical because physical things are affected by other physical things. And they existed before the physical things. The laws of logic always exist. But they don't do anything. They just are. They're axioms. They're how reality functions. Non-physical doesn't mean supernatural. At least not necessarily. In this case, regarding the laws of logic... You don't have to assume or assert that they must be supernatural because they're not physical. Not being physical doesn't mean what you think it means. Well, what do you think it means? You might think it means, well, it doesn't exist in this reality, but it still exists, so it must exist in a different reality that I'm going to call the supernatural. This ambiguity of words reminds me of the constant misuse of the word theory. It's just a theory! A deconverted man theory! Thanks for watching! No, that's not what science means by theory. In science, the word theory means something completely different than what we might mean when we use the word theory and well, that's confusing. Why we use the same word in different ways? I don't know. We just do. Words can be played with very easily by those who are willing to do so. We must be very careful that we correctly understand what is being said by non-physical. In order to do that, we're going to have to learn about metaphysics. And that's something that some people just are interested in, they don't want to do, or maybe they gave it a glance and felt, eh, that's good enough. I, I have learned enough. I don't need to learn more. But that's very dangerous because people will use your lack of knowledge against you. They'll use your lack of knowledge to make an argument that seems to be perfectly reasonable, but in fact isn't reasonable. If you don't know logic, you don't know how to analyze an argument for logical fallacies. Glancing at some logical fallacies, looking at some articles about logic, maybe watching a video or two isn't enough to educate yourself on the matter. What is real? How do I know? Can I know? What the bleep is going on? To answer really any question, we need some methodology. The scientific method gives us a methodology, as does formal and informal logic. Philosophy gives us different ways of thinking about things, but it does not in and of itself necessarily give us a methodology to follow. Well, what's the methodology of philosophy? I'm glad you asked. We don't know. Nobody can agree upon it. Whoops. Oh well. But it's not useless. It's just we don't know what the method is, or even if there is a method. But with logic and science, we absolutely know what their methodology is, and both have been shown to produce results in the real world. These methods have been proven to work. But what if you don't want to use them? I just want to make an argument, and that's it. Well, fine, you can do so, but when we go to examine your argument for logical fallacies, well, we're going to have to not use logic by itself, we're going to have to verify with the real world on whether or not your premises are actually true or not. And if you want to verify something in the real world, well, how are you going to do that? Is a third system possible? Maybe. 
as far as I know, no one's developed one yet. If you want to try to, great. But it's going to have to make predictions. It's going to have to have some models. It's going to have to have formulas. It's going to have some methodology that you can use to show that it results in a correct result. God can't be proven using science. I've heard this many times from apologists. God is not a scientific thing. God isn't science. God isn't physical. See, you're asking something that I can't give you. Maybe God is like the laws of logic. They're not physical. God's not physical. They're in the same category. But the laws of logic have no mind. They're not agents. They can't do anything or make anything. They can make no choices. And for some, God has to be a thing that is able to make choices and decisions. It has to be an agent. It has to have a mind that is somehow separate from a brain. Although we've never seen such a thing. Nonetheless, God has to be a mind that somehow is not physical. What does it mean that a mind isn't physical? The only mind that I know about is, well, our mind, the human mind, and, well, other animals' minds, but nonetheless, this is something that needs a physical thing to be a thing in the first place. To say it's not physical is incorrect. It's an emergent property of the things that make up it, and without those things, it can't be. Or so I think. I could be wrong. Maybe the mind truly is a spirit that simply exists on its own, independent of anything else. But we would need to prove that. How do we prove that? Well, we can't prove it, you see. It's not something that's provable because it can't be tested. It can't be verified in any way, shape, or form. You can't see it because it's not physical. You can't do measurements on it. And so you just have to believe in it. And that is what faith is. It's belief in something that you don't have any way to prove. You might think you have an argument for it. You don't. You might think you have evidence for it, but you can't have evidence for it because if you had evidence, you wouldn't have faith, you'd have a fact. My go-to quote has been and will continue to be, I don't need faith, I have facts. On the flip side, when you have faith, you don't need the facts. You just believe in stuff. It's simple, it's easy to understand, and so it's comforting. I don't need to understand the complicated world that is out there. I can just believe it all makes sense in this very easy to understand way that I have happened to found in this particular religion that I happen to belong to. Which of course is the right religion and all the other religions are wrong. And, and all that confusion doesn't help us progress further as a species. I'm very, very worried about us humans. I'm worried that we're destroying our world. I'm worried that we don't believe in facts. I'm worried that we rely way too much on stories and myth to guide us rather than the actual reality that confronts us. And I do understand challenging our notions is very difficult. I'm very compassionate towards my fellow humans. I understand why they believe as they do, but I have to try my best to get people to learn and understand informal logic. The way I'm going about it doesn't really make any sense, but it's the methodology I've chosen and it doesn't have to make sense. This method worked on me. Once upon a time, I was a believer, and it was thanks to people calling themselves atheists that asked me critical questions that I could not answer that got me to investigate my faith to see if it was actually true. That investigation led to my deconversion. I found that it wasn't true. If you're interested in finding out whether what you think is true is actually true, you're going to have to investigate it, which means diligently trying to prove yourself wrong. 
don't look at the people that are just going to tell you that you're right. Look at the people who are going to tell you that you're wrong and then do everything that you can to understand why they're saying that you're wrong. It's okay to be wrong. You learn something new. Could God still exist despite all of that? Sure. I don't know. I don't believe in God. But I do see that God can be useful, but it can also be very dangerous, like any other idea. But for me, God is just an idea, and I'm okay with that. For some, they're going to need God to really exist at some level, and that too might be fine, but temper it with reason and logic. Don't assert that your God exists when you know that it can't be proven. Instead, say you have faith in God. Then there's no argument to be had. I believe in God. Great. Then you can't dictate what others can or can't do with their lives. You can only dictate what you do with your own life. Keep whatever you think God has said to yourself. Well, I hope that this has been thought-provoking. And, of course, I could be wrong about any of the things that I've said. And if you think I'm wrong, let me know why you think I'm wrong and what method you use to get to the conclusion that I'm wrong in your comment that I will surely respond to. But if we don't have empirical evidence, we don't have repeatable tests, or we don't have a valid and sound argument, I think that we have to be skeptical of the conclusions. By the way, the argument that I gave here, this whole thing, uh, that is, th this was an argument of sorts. So you have an argument, and uh, I think it's valid. I didn't put a syllogism. I'm pretty sure it's sound, though. Um, if it's not, doubt it, then I guess. But that well, maybe God is like the laws of laws of. <laughs>